Before we get started with today's video, don't forget about the giveaway. A complete AN 8009 multimeter kit. It's being sponsored by Banggood and it is available to subscribers to this channel anywhere on earth that Banggood delivers. So all you need to do is watch the video for the giveaway down below and comment on it and on September 3rd which is Labor Day here in the United States we will draw the winner and our good friends at Banggood will ship it out to you. Don't forget check the link, enter the contest, good luck to you, big thanks to Banggood. Now to today's video. Hey what's happening guys? Today I want to invite you to think differently whereas the uh, corporate speak is think outside the box but I prefer just think differently don't constrain yourself by what you learn in the books don't constrain yourself with what your professors taught you but take everything you know and use it to your advantage to change things all right look up here up in this corner you know who that is right if you don't that is a very young Steve Wozniak, the real brains behind Apple Computer. Woz always tried to do things differently. When he was a boy growing up, they couldn't afford computers. But what Woz did was he ordered the manuals for the computers of the day, looked over their schematics, and then he spent time redesigning them with fewer chips. And that was always something that he loved to do, redesign things with fewer chips. Um, in one of the groundbreaking moves of early Apple days, when um, Steve Jobs had taken some work at Atari for Jack Trammell, designing the breakout game, Woz went with him. They had like four days to complete it, and they were working nonstop round the clock. Woz says he was kind of out of his mind with the lack of sleep, and he noticed the way that they were using pseudo color on some Atari video games what they had done was they had used a colored plastic like plastic sheeting like an acetate over parts of the screen and he said when the pixels would move across it they'd change color and this sparked something in his mind because in those days to put color on a computer cost thousands of dollars but and this is a direct quote from Woz he said I figured out a way to do it with a little one dollar chip and the way that was, was colors on this Apple took advantage of a quirk of the NTSC television signal. And it, it made it cheap. He could do it with a $1 chip. Um, it was basically, I mean, colors done with a color burst pattern. I, uh, analog TV is long gone, but, you know, this is the way it was done. It had to do with phase and, and stuff like that. And he figured out how to get a couple colors in the beginning. Um, particularly, what was it, magenta and green by doing a grid pattern and white by um, putting two pixels next to each other. Then later on, they got a couple more colors. But anyway, I digress. Here's what we want to talk about. Think differently. Let's, uh, let's start with a really simple example. What's this? This is an electric motor. And if we take the said electric motor and we apply a current to it, I don't know if you can see that, but said motor is turning. Maybe you can hear if I put it up to my microphone. Oh, I just bumped the microphone. Can you hear that humming? Okay. So we know that's what happens when you put current to an electric motor it turns. Is that all a motor can do? No, that's not all the motor can do. Don't accept that because that's what the books tell you. You put current to an electric motor and it turns. Well, that's one thing it'll do. Well, what if we reverse that? What if we take the motor and we turn it? then what happens? Well then basically the motor oh, turned it the wrong way the motor becomes 
a generator. We can take kinetic energy and turn it into electrical energy. Now that is the simplest of demonstrations. But it is a way to think differently. Now, let's talk about something else. I'm going to draw something here. And uh, you guys all know what it is. That's a resistor, right? Well, if we go like this, it is a potentiometer. Let's turn it around. So, if we take one leg of this and run it to VCC, and the other leg of it to ground, and the potentiometer is centered, centered, oh my, centered, then what we get here is one half VCC. And then if we move it over here, you know, say we get three quarters over here, we get one quarter. It's the way potentiometers work, right? Sure. But what if you, we think differently about them? Let's think differently. Let's flip this over. And once again, we will draw our potentiometer. But in this case, let's do this. Let's have our potentiometer legs go out to a couple of LEDs. And those LEDs connect to ground. And then we connect this up to a battery of cells and connect that to the wiper of the potentiometer. What do you think of that? Well, I have just such a circuit right here. Let's zoom in. So here's our potentiometer. This is a, uh, with a 2K. And jump it right across to the anodes of a couple of red LEDs. Now, if I hook it up to a five volt power supply, well, it lights the LEDs and it's not blowing them up. Why is it not blowing them up? Because with this thing centered, we have now provided 5K, or 5K, 1K of resistance to each LED, which we can then vary by playing with the potentiometer. So be different. Think different. Think like was. How else can you do what needs to be done? That's all I got to say today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. A big thanks to all my patrons, and a big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.